Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to test our little AZ GTI mount. The reason for that is that we're having a beautiful sunset with beautiful pink and orange clouds, which means that there are clouds indeed. And clouds can be a little tiny obstacle for us to photography somehow. And uh, yeah, there are like high altitude clouds all over the place. It's super hazy. It's not going to be good, which is great for testing. It means that my main setups uh, here and there, they're I leave them where they are and we're just going to play with this little thing here. First things that, the first things that we're going to do is that we're going to actually power it. So I'm going to use a portable battery since I want to make sure that it works with what I have on the field. And that way it will uh, let me see how long this battery will actually last powering both the camera, the mount and the dew heater. That is a lot. And um, after that, I will be polar aligning it, uh, this mount and um, I've gotten quite a lot of questions about how do I make sure that the mount is well uh, balanced like that because the RA axis is so stiff. Um, the answer is I'm lazy and I don't care. And actually I'm, I, I'm, I'm halfway serious there. Um, it's you can use the uh, amp meter kind of methodology, which will work perfectly fine with this mount. Uh, but for me in the end, I was like, whatever. Um, as long as you know when I uh, I put the uh, the AZ GTI on the side like that, if I push in one direction and I don't see it like falling, but you can see, yeah, if I if I push here and if I push here, I think I have a slightly more trouble pushing on the lens, which means that we're probably slightly counterweight heavy, and I don't care because. Full disclosure, I have used the exact same setup a long time ago. Uh, well, not the exact same, but similar setup a long time ago without any counterweight bar or counterweight at all. It worked perfectly fine. Uh, so from that point on, I was like, meh, who cares? Uh, so I guess the conclusion is like, don't sweat it unless you see some very poor guiding results. Another question I've gotten a lot is what do you do for polar alignment? How do you polar align this? There is no polar scope. And uh, for that, this is uh, something that I've described in previous videos as well. I use a piece of software called SharpCap Pro that will basically use the main telescope lens. It will ask me to rotate uh, the mount like 90 degrees after taking exposures. And then it uses the magic of plate solving, which is basically it knows what stars are where uh, to uh, determine um, my polar alignment error and to let me fix it. It's super convenient and I love that piece of software. Uh, the SharpCap Cap Pro version costs something like $10 a year, something like that. It's, it's not a lot and it's absolutely worth it. Um, there is one thing though with the uh, dismount when you, after you're done polar aligning it, if you're using a Skywatcher Star Adventure uh, wedge like I am here, there are two bolts on the side, um, he hexagon uh, that accept um, hexagonal uh, wrenches, you'll want to tighten them up. Otherwise, the thing is kind of like unstable on the tripod. So that is something you'll want to do. But basically, these are the only things that I'm going to go do before I start uh, imaging. Now, when I start imaging, I'll be doing some guiding using this little guide scope here. Guiding uh, will be done uh, directly through uh, to the mount using an EQ direct cable that I, that I now have for this mount. So instead of using the official Skywatcher uh, over Wi-Fi ASCOM driver, I'll be using EQ mod today to control the mount because I like EQ mod and I'm used to it. And all those guide pulses, they will not go from the guide camera to the mount. Uh, because there's no auto guider port, port on the mount, but also because doing that is terrible, you I will simply be uh, sending the guide pulses via this USB cable from the computer. If you are not sure what auto guiding is or what guiding is in general, feel free to watch a video on that topic that I'll be linking to above. But it's basically uh, very easy. It's like I have a secondary telescope here with a, sec a secondary camera here. And the only purpose of that scope is to look at a star. And if it sees that this star starts moving away from uh, where it was a moment ago, it will tell the mount like, hey, dude, you're, you're kind of like, you know, going away from your target. You should get back as quickly as possible. And the goal is to basically detect those changes and correct them before it impacts the main imaging camera that we have here. It's as simple as that. Of course, it's as complicated as that. At the same time, there's tons of parameters that come with guiding. And I'll probably do a guiding specific video at some point in the near future. But with that, I think uh, we are ready. There's a lot of wind. We're finally getting towards the sunset. 
it. I still need to uh, probably, uh, yeah, I think it's my turn to cook uh, today. Jupiter is back there and it's beautiful. Uh, maybe I should take the Schmidt Casa grain out. Uh, maybe later. Anyway, you see, it's like always a conflict of interest between what I want to do and what I can do. Uh, but once all of this is done, I'll be back on this balcony controlling this little telescope via my computer here and uh, we'll see how well it performs because the last time I used it, I was at the foot of Tokyo Tower. It was completely stupid, but because everything was so bright all around me, it was impossible for me to do the polar alignment. So the mount was completely misaligned which means that any results it gave me uh, were not characteristic of what the mount can achieve so we'll find out more today if you're interested by the way in that tokyo tower trip feel free to watch the video there it was completely silly um, but you know I, i'm putting a link up above so with that i'll see you at night uh, by the way if you're new to this channel welcome to the channel and if astrophotography astronomy is something that interests you you may want to consider going down below and clicking that subscribe button and let that little uh, notification bell but anyway see you tonight so we are polar lines uh, it was a bit difficult to polar align but with because of the clouds that are in the north so sharp cap had a lot of trouble plate solving but basically really what you want to do when you have this little mount to polar line is you really want to first point it towards the north um, and if you can visually see Polaris just point it roughly towards Polaris uh, one of the things as well if you're using the star adventure um, wedge or they call it the equatorial platform whatever uh, the um, degrees are inverted uh, so if you want to go to for me it's around 35 degrees um, you should not go to 35 you should go to 90 minus 35 uh, degrees uh, so you can actually get you know the uh, the figure that you want uh, and once you have those two things uh, dialed in more or less you'll be able to use sharp cap to actually do the polar alignment now i have uh, pointed the lens more or less towards the veil nebula um, I will want to try to see if the guiding kind of works, but already I have noticed something. My mobile battery is actually not uh, enough to power both uh, the dew heater that I have here, uh, my camera cooler, and uh, the mount at the same time. So for the moment I have uh, put it down to just the mount and the camera cooler. So this is something good to know, right? So this is exactly why I do this kind of testing and kind of makes me rethink my strategy about this um, uh, this battery. And you know, when I look at the, the whole piece of equipment like that, uh, the, the thing that, I, that strikes me is that even though it is super compact and, and super light, uh, relatively speaking, this is not something that I'd be com comfortable like hiking with because when I go hiking, I typically like go ultra light and uh, I'm, I'm, I very much like to have a, as light a pack as possible and I like to camp and so I carry my own tent, my own food. Uh, I carry as little water as I can because I try to refill that in the middle of the way. So this is not going to be awesome for hiking. So um, still, I might take it for simple hikes um, and uh, and see what that gives. And also, uh, but it makes me think like maybe I would want to buy a very small star tracker along with uh, a cheap DSLR, for example, to, for really when I want to just go hiking without uh, anything and i'll see what i do but this is quite interesting for me because I've, I've been carrying this around and i can feel that it is indeed overall not super heavy but it is heavy this is definitely airline transportable you can go to other countries with that you can put it in your luggage with no problem but maybe something like hiking is a bit more difficult so it has made me think a lot about things so now i have this pointed more or less towards the veil nebula the clouds are all over the place. We're not going to get anything good out of this. Uh, we have the um, L-Extreme filter set in here. I'm still going to run, uh, I mean, I'm going to run an imaging, imaging session. We'll see what you know it gives us, but <laughs> I am not optimistic at all. I'll also be reporting on the results of the guiding that I get, even though we are right after a typhoon and uh, the winds are still strong. So that, that's going to skew the guiding towards very bad results. But with a 200 millimeter lens and a camera like that, my resolution is very low. So uh, I can have very poor guiding and still get round stars, which is great, which is exactly what we want for this kind of 
very portable setup. So that's kind of where I am right now. It's not great, but at least you know we're we're making pro progress. I'm learning stuff. This is really very interesting overall. Oh, by the way, um, if you are interested as well, uh, my tripod right now is not leveled at all, uh, but we are polar aligned, so I don't really care once the polar alignment is done whether the tripod is level or not does not matter that much <laughs> uh, but besides that you know nothing to uh to really add so let me uh basically try to get some exposures on the veil nebula if i get anything out of this i'll be showing you what uh, what i get because you know i've i've been taking pictures of the veil nebula forever now uh, in this recent season uh it's just a test and i'll show you also the guiding results so see you tomorrow once all of this is done and so here we are in the morning it is done so i am kind of happy to see the mount having returned to its parking position because that means it works well but i had to disconnect my eq direct cable because um, as i had been warned in the comments previously uh, i had already bought that cable when it was warned but uh, aliexpress cables are not awesome and this cable actually lost connectivity quite a few times uh, early in the night so I actually came in and uh, changed back to the Wi-Fi connection to the mount which did not fail at all so I guess going forward I will be using the Wi-Fi connectivity to the mount for now until I get a better um, EQ direct uh, cable but we'll see uh, what happens there but uh, yeah I mean I had uh, also um, properly closed down the aperture of the mount using my step down rings uh, here which is good so um, I got round stars and the guiding it seems um, it's difficult to say how well it performed because the wind was really really strong but it feels like from the guide logs that there are periods without too much um, wind and I have around 2.6 uh, arc seconds RMS of guiding. Most of the poor guiding is actually due to uh, declination and especially declination taking time to return back to baseline after a dither. And that's something that I should, um, that it's probably due to some uh, declination backlash. And I feel like I will probably want to um, take, uh, take uh, the mount apart again and basically remove the spring from the declination uh, axis well not remove the spring but actually make it ineffective so that i have I'm, I am manually meshing the worm and gear which means that maybe with the seasons changing i'll need to uh change the meshing but you know that's uh something to take into account but i mean the positive thing though is that um with this lens um it's not a big problem because I have a 3.5 roughly arc seconds per pixel so 2.6 RMS that works perfectly fine for me uh, of course it's not super precise but again it's if you were not dithering you would not have this issue and uh, but that does mean that this mount is very uh, feasible so I learned that EQ direct cable my own cable here is not awesome I've learned that the Wi-Fi connection actually works pretty well and it it did uh, park them out well. I've learned that it got even more cloudy during the night and that uh, PhD2 lost the guide star, guided on clouds, made everything go to heck. And so most of the imaging time was on a random star field without any nebulosity because why not? <laughs> and uh, so I didn't get anything but again I didn't expect to get anything so uh, so I think that's uh, that's fine. I'll make sure to display a couple of the images that I got, uh, at least like the su subframes, maybe stack a few subframes with clouds, just so you, you can see how they look like uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know star shapes and, and overall appearance. Um, especially, I mean, I am quite happy with the lens itself once it is uh, closed down. So I closed down to rough, closed it down. I uh, said to around the f4 which is still faster than my uh, refractor for example and honestly the results are very very satisfying and and very very reasonable and that's really why i like to have lenses for astrophotography because uh, lenses they're um, uh, small they are light they have an internal focus motor that if i have a canon lens i can use and 
uh, you can find really cheap lenses uh, if they're old. Like this is a really old lens and um, I think it has a bit of fungus in there. That's why it was super cheap when I bought it and I just blasted it with UV light um, to, um, to prevent the fungus from growing more and doesn't bother me at all. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, like just testing out this piece of equipment during a terrible night. Although now we finally have, oh, the moon is there, it's pretty. Uh, we, <laughs> we finally um, have a proper uh, cloud-free um, daytime. So hmm, uh, I guess that's how it works. And that's usually the case, uh, I mean, not usually, but very often the case in Japan where you have very cloudy nights and sunny days. Who, who knows how it works? Uh, so thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, this is the kind of stuff that I always do. It's about astronomy, astrophotography, experimenting with equipment, exper experimenting with uh, new objects that I try to image, uh, tons of stuff uh, that I try doing. And if that sounds like it's interesting, feel free to go down below, click on that little subscribe button, uh, notification bell next to it as well. And at any rate, uh, if you like this video, go down below, click on that like button. Please leave, feel free to leave a uh, comment. And if you're buying any astrophotography equipment in the near future and you don't mind shopping from OPT, feel free to use my OPT affiliate links that I have in the description. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Remember that whenever you can, you should be looking up at the stars and I'll see you next time.